Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast. Episode 102, Pickups and Put Downs. With me, George, and as always joined by, well, I say always, it's a one-off. Maybe not. I don't even know. But he's here anyway. He's out on tag once again. I think this is all part of his uh, whole I'm coming out of jail, get ready for the probation scenario. As always joined by Tom. Triple A pickup to my can't even pick my nose how's it how is it going how's freedom treating you what's the world coming to what's going on freedom is good um they let me out to watch the finale of line of duty last night and they said you can have a bit longer seeing as you behaved and you didn't get up to any um unpleasantness no well, you li- you're a changed man i don't know whether it was the ghosts at christmas for the christmas special christmas yeah. carol that taught you how to redefine your life or whether it was the love of a great partner in Rick. Is he out or is he still at Rikers Island, uh, New York uh, Penitentiary? He's actually returned. Well, I say returned, he's never been there. He's uh, he's paid a visit to Farmerton. He's out. He's out for good. I've got a few more months left. You and but... him are going to relocate to a country cottage in Farmerton? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be on one of those shows on BBC in the afternoon about how we bought this place for a pittance and then have done it up in a very um, white people doing houses up style fashion. Just going to knock this wall through, turn it into a an open plan kitchen. Okay, I can see you. I can see you effectively going down the route of wanting to open plan things to the point where the house's first floor falls down on top of the second floor behind <laughs> the top of the ground floor because there was no walls holding anything up anymore. You went that open plan. Well, I'm excited. Well, Rick, Rick, has a, Rick has qualifications in construction. At least that's what he told me. But Sledgehammer 101, New York I think degree. He was wearing like a builder's outfit at some fancy dress we went to. So you're relocating to the uh, the gatehouse at Farmerton, uh, to the Pont- Pontsalbury estate. You're hopefully- yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a ruin now, but we'll get it looking ship shape. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Is this, is this really planting the seed that me and Bobby need to see if we can either rebuy the show from El Buccio or ask him if he can relocate us to Farmerton? Once I start, once I'm out fully and start flipping houses, money won't be an issue i've got a few celebrity appearances lined up as well i thought you were out fully are you uh, no i've got a couple more months to serve so oh you're on about your penitentiary release yes i was gonna say you know one would imagine you're fully out being in a relationship with big rig no it'll be long distance for a while that's harsh isn't it anyway new fans and old especially the new ones are wondering what the hell i came for video games pick up some put downs from the charity shops the freshly opened charity shops thrift stores and car boots but before we get too carried away let's give those new and old listeners the initiated and the un- uninitiated a quick run through of what's going to happen so coming up is some news within there a hail to the publications of old Yes, that's right. We're going to talk about video game magazines. Then we're going to storm into the feature, which is basically Tom sat in front of his heat lamp with a piece of foil under his face while I go through uh, Stingray's boot. <laughs> then, because <laughs> you're going to bring, you're going to bring the big guy back. You're going to bring him back for one episode. It's going to be a Stingray's boot episode. Yes, that's right. We're going to pin him down. Unbelievable. I wasn't told this when I sent the... Uh, like breakfast. Clockwork Orange, we're going to force feed his corneas, your pickups. Don't worry. He will see every single one of them. And then storming up the drive with a renovatory sort of look in his eye. Uh, uh, did Stingray go to Rikers Island to give you games and stuff? or Because he can of appear in it. Of course Good. he did. Okay. He was pretending he was fishing and then he accidentally cast the line with the game on the end of it through the bars. <laughs> Easy feature. <laughs> Just like out of a comic book. I'm sure the hardcore fans are jumping for joy. Like, no, we don't want a deep dive on XYZ game. No, we want to find out what's going on with the backstory and we want to know what's going on in front. I've got plenty of time inside to be right in the law. Okay, well... Without any fur, well, I'm so confused by all this shenanigans that you've brought upon us. I never said at the end of the show, 
I ask you what you're hoping to play. But the show cannot begin until Odders grip tight, down hard, on your uh, temporary gamekeeper's hook, stroke crook, as I ask Tom, Tom, what have you been playing? Well, Stingray was uh, lucky enough to bag me a copy of Returnal, and due to all the scalpers in uh, Rikers Island, the PS5 is in abundance. So went down <laughs> to the uh, went down to the leisure area where we congregate, play a few games. Yeah, shoot some pool, play some cards. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I've been playing Returnal on the PS5. Absolutely wonderful game. Um, Easy. How it. how how would you? Because obviously, to the outsider. Stingray's hopefully going to be throwing that at me when he storms up the drive in a, in a, a few short moments. Um, to an outsider, I've seen several different bits of footage of this game. One of them, it looks like, oh, you know, it's this creepy, creepy looking little horror game. The other bits of footage I see basically make it look like one of Housemark's normal 2D bullet hell games, but done on a 3D plane. Now, is it a 3D bullet hell shooter? Or is it? like a space sci-fi horror game or is it some strange amalgamation of the two and they can happily coexist in the same environment yeah it's very much um a stew pot of of various different genres and ingredients of of, um those games you've mentioned um it's it it really reminded me of metroid prime when it came out on the gamecube that Mm. like cold Bit a little bit bleak, but very visually stunning looking um, style that they've gone for. Um, uh, PS5's it's, it's first, PS5's style. first follow up exclusive graphically. Yeah, are we going? Oh my goodness gracious me! This is next gen, or are we going? Mm, you know, think, in um, this cross gen place. I think. Ratchet and Clank's trailer this week at the State of Play kind of took a little bit of shine off Returnal when I booted it up. Um, there's so many nice little details, and it it's a little bit like Devil May Cry in terms of they've focused a lot on smooth animation, uh, frames per second, um, a lot going on on screen at once, rather than if you booted up PS5 Ghost of Tsushima with the update, there's not a great deal of difference, but it's everything else that it's doing. The low times are, well, they're just barely there. Considering you, it's got that time loop mechanic or death loop mechanic. Um, it's incredibly fast to get back into the action. And I think that's really important in a game like this because it, you, Agree. you, you will die, you'll die a lot. Um, starting tips for new players. <clears throat> um, just persevere with it. It's fun. The gameplay is, unbelievably fun so you've got that there and this the story is intriguing enough to go oh i just want to find out a bit more about that what's going on so just persevere don't don't think i'm dying low so i'm going to take this and trade it because i'm no good at it just you people now struggle a little bit i think it's going to struggle to breach into that casual market when it's a shame because i think casual fans will find a lot here because you can just think i've got an hour spare i'm going to have a go at a run a lot of people call them like runs or cycles. I'm going to I'm going to go at a run, I'm going to get as far as I can get. Um, there's a lot of talk Would in a minute. I, 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 I was thinking the other day, I've been looking at some of the, the gameplay footage and obviously I've got the game sat ready to go in a moment. Just been, yeah. things have been a little bit different for us this uh, past couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. But the question. Yeah. This sort of um, these runs, as you call it, and 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 the way the game's played, would you liken it to like a sci-fi? This is a little bit out there, but go with me. Would you liken it to like a sci-fi Dead Rising one? Oh, I'm trying to remember the the uh, the layout. That 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 had that that game had very limited opportunity to save. It was only in these certain positions. You had a run through, but if you died, it was kind of like scratch. You start again, and you keep playing through. 
again and again and again, yeah. but you get a little bit better and you get your stats and obviously you can get further into the game each time you have a go. Because when I first played Dead Rising, it was one of the first games I played, uh, it was on 360, um, that had that sort of mechanic in it. Because obviously in a game normally, being bred from the era of the Pong clone to then, me dying so many times kind of was like, oh God, I want to play this game through without dying. Like what what's going on? What am I doing wrong? But then it was a whole new style of gameplay that made us go, Oh, it's okay for me to die. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah, okay. That's what you've got to get in your head about. You're gonna die. There's even a portion you reach where I see some people online have managed to actually get through that and break, almost break the game a little bit. But there's a point where you're pretty much guaranteed to die. Um, similar to Demon Souls intro. Yeah, uh, to show you the mechanic, and and that is part of the game, and it's okay uh, to for that to happen. I, I suppose it's better conveyed the reason for this happening than Dead Rising. This is like part of the story that you. Yeah, that 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 adds more that, that adds more credence to it for me. Yeah, I mean, don't I think I'll tell this to anyone. Don't go in expecting big sci-fi action action adventure uh, akin to Ghost of Tsushima or uh, Last of Us or God of War. It's not like that but did sony not need a game that was frightfully different because we all know that third person 3d open world adventure games with a circular crafting wheel in the bottom right taking place across zombie genres future apocalyptic genres uh yeah. father and son simulator genres and the list goes on um sony had kind of like cooked its own goose in the ps4 era producing exclusive after exclusive which although good kind of fit within this genre that they didn't stray out of so surely returnal spearing off outside of that uh idea is a good one or not or has it fallen flat no absolutely a really a, a good choice to do something very different it is a bullet health shooter um, to me, it's a cross between Cuphead, Metroid Prime, um, what else? Uh, a game called Dead Cells on the the Switch and various other pieces. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, similar like design to that, or any roguelike um, type of game. I I love it. I think that there's enough content there to warrant the price. The price again was a tough one to take. Luckily. Um, I was given some vouchers by an inmate, um, so it made it a bit cheaper. Uh, <laughs> but, we uh, haven't discussed yeah. either yeah. on air how much Dave Perry loved the fact that you were uh, uh, <laughs> you were a criminal. He loved the law, didn't he? Yeah. Um, hopefully I'll talk a little bit more than I did in that episode. I was just quite taken aback about... Um, it was just so interesting. Uh, hopefully people listening to this show... Well, you and him already. ditched me at the end of the interview and went down to the New York eatery, which is Trestles. Well, when you've got two A-listers, it's hard not to leave a third wheel. I noticed very much, yes. I did notice um, this. Going back quickly to Returnal to close out, um, I think if you can afford it and you're interested in the game or, or you like that description... Uh, go read a couple of previews. If not, it's a big amount of cash to splash out for it. But if we don't support games like this, they won't get made because it'll be seen as a flop. To me, it's not a flop. It's a really, really well-made game. The I think uh, I think Returnal's got one hell of an uphill struggle to to get up because it's a bit of a strange game in in genre in identifying which genre genre it sits in. PS5 yeah. and the, all next-gen consoles, really. They've sold well, but in the face of stock shortages, which have been ongoing now for five months, yeah. uh, maybe six, um, it's going to be hard to get an installed user base that can appreciate what Returnal can do. I think Possibly, this game will be big with the, with the speedrunners. Um, I think it'll be really popular with that, that speedrunning community. Um, it's perfectly made for for those challenges. Um, I'm not saying you have to do it in that way because it's just as exciting exploring slowly. The combat tips I'd give, just keep on the move. Keep moving. Very similar to Doom Eternal and Doom before it. 
keep moving, keep shooting, play aggressive. It's the best way to, it, it will stand you in good stead and use your melee attack, which is square button. Um, and final tip, because I don't want to say any more spoilers. If you're struggling for health and you're on a good run, you can't find any more health in the level, go back to your ship, crawl back inside through the wreckage, go to the back and there's a bed you can sleep in. It will regenerate your health. The game does not tell you this, but luckily something that came across and it's really, really useful tip. If you think I've, I've got a good gun, I've got good stats, I'm a good run, I don't want to die when I've got fraction of health, go back to your ship, sleep in the bed, you will recover a decent amount of health. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's about it for Eternal. Okay. Uh, well, strongly recommend. On the white hot edge of gaming, I've been playing MLB. No, not on the PS5. No, not on the PS4. No, I've been playing it on the PS TV, which is a stripped down PS Vita, which I've got nailed to my bedroom in the uh, nailed to my TV in my bedroom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been playing what Tom would describe as horrible CFAX looking graphics baseball game. <laughs> that still plays as well as its big brother, thankfully. And, and that's where I've been at. I've been scratching about on some handheld stuff and, and, and a bit more Minecraft, I suppose. I'm going through a bit of a weird phase with gaming, but I'm hoping uh, Returnal's going to get its get its vicious little hooks in me and drag me back into the ecosystem. This is really what I've been waiting for um, since the PS5 launched, I have to admit. I think the next uh, month or two is exciting, very exciting. Next week, I've got Resident Evil Village coming. Uh, and after that, we've got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which I think you saw in the state of play. What were yeah. your thoughts on that? I actually just thought it was a, a great looking game. I've not really played a Ratchet and Clank properly since the PS2. So I've got the ones for the PS3. Again, you see them for 50p, you pick them up, don't you? And I was going to have a little. Uh, soiree through that i suppose but um and and i think i probably will but i think maybe the ps5 one will get to me first and i'll give that a go uh say it tell a lie i played the 2016 um reimagining as it's known um which i thought was great and, and still looks good now but seeing the rift apart graphics and gameplay and everything that's going on i mean it looks very busy there's loads of particle effects going on on screen the animation seems on point the textures and the interactions with certain textures like his fur and stuff look look great and and the game that i've seen running in the state of play looks flawless you know the world looked big yeah. the backgrounds look very deep the world building seemed pretty strong so yeah, I'm intrigued to see what comes of that. I mean, 2016's Ratchet and Clank, um, I think, fell a bit on deaf ears because it was kind of passed over a little bit as a kiddie game. So it's hard to make a 3D platformer with characters like that and it not appear to be a kiddie game. There's still some great gameplay elements in there that we can enjoy. And, you know, if you base a game's art style on who it's for then, you know, you might miss some absolute belters. But, uh, yeah, I'm intrigued to see how that goes down. Hopefully, Ratchet and Clank's been around long enough where the PS4 and the PS2 and the PS3 has built up, like, a really strong fan base of people that either grew up with it or got into it when they were younger, and therefore their excitement for this new version is through the roof. Well, this is where, like... Um... I'd argue the point that starvation of, of new titles for a new console is actually sometimes quite good because when the drip feed comes, like we've got Returnal and then Ratchet and Clank, the intrigue is higher because nobody's got anything to to play on the new machine. Like they've played Demon Souls or Spider-Man, they've finished one of those or both, and they're like, oh, you know what? Like, I just want a new PS5 game built just for PS5, so I'll give that a try. I've never tried that. You are going to have a portion who go, oh my God, that's horrible. I don't like it. But you will have hopefully an equal portion go, wow, I might try more roguelites. I might try more ratcheting clamps from the old machine. So I think it's not always a bad thing. I think over flooding, when we get to like winter, as always, it might be a bit different this year because of the world situation. Um, it's not always that great because it just creates backlog. People miss out on some really good titles, but this slow drip feed is actually sometimes better, I believe. Mm, okay. Well, on the news, on the shock news that Tom likes a slow drip feed, 
It's time for the news. So scour the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, and yes, it's my turn. I want to be first at something for a change, Tom. This, okay. this headline cuts deep. This represents the very last of the print media. The sole remaining official magazine in Britain has turned off its lights. Its official PlayStation magazine UK is no more. The public's, publication's latest incarnation tallied 187 issues, with Returnal being the last ever cover star. Future Publishing shuttered official Xbox Magazine UK in 2020, while official Nintendo Magazine UK published its final issue all the way back in 2014. Official PlayStation Magazine UK was, for the longest time, Britain's best-selling video game magazine. But the emergence of the internet and obviously podcasts, probably like ours really, so it's all our fault, has resulted in decline in sales. For many PlayStation gamers, uh, including ourselves, the publication was practically a Bible in the late 90s and early 2000s. Those PS1 demo discs were iconic. The good news is that official PlayStation Magazine isn't going away entirely. The existing editorial staff are relaunching Play Magazine. Now, if you remember, that was a great magazine from the 90s, and it's all the same branding that they're bringing back to this. Starting the 4th of May with Ratchet and Clank Apart cover, back in the glory days of game magazines, Play was published as an unofficial alternative to official Play uh, PlayStation magazine. But it was eventually shuttered in 2016. Now it's back. Here's a quote from them. Our aim is for play to go further and deeper than ever before in the world of PlayStation gaming. Editor Ian Dean wrote on the Game Radar's website, and crucially, it's made by the same team of writers, editors, and designers with the same deep industry access, quality of writing, and passion for all things PlayStation. I will say, before we switch to the mighty incarcerated one for his opinion, or the non-incarcerated one for his opinion, I love video game magazines. Now, I've probably been brought up in an era where they were the only way to get news. Now, I have some favorites magazines along along the way. The official Dreamcast magazine, the way it laid its format out, the way it did like a gadget review, the way it did... It felt like it was a magazine of the time. It felt like FHM doing video games, and it was very, very... Classy, very, very cool uh, magazine. <clears throat> Official PlayStation magazine from the PS3 era to now, for me, had the same vibe, the same layout. It was flesh, it was fresh, it was clean. I miss video game magazines. For many years, I was a very loyal subscriber to the official Xbox magazine from the original Xbox all the way through to the latter end of the 360 post the launch of the Kinect and all that other ramble. <clears throat> So I've always loved magazines. I've subscribed to them and everything like that. How do you feel about this last official? Because it was always kind of cool to go get your new console and then get that one-off magazine that maybe had a DVD with it wrapped in foil because it was issue zero or issue one and you barely had anything to play on it, which probably isn't the case these days. Uh, and then you could put that DVD in or the VHS in and you could watch what your machine could do. It was... It was it was also an introduction into the machine, taught you the menus and other bits and bobs. Is the death of the magazine a bad thing? Yeah, uh, I agree with you. I think it's pretty sad. Um, I'll take you back to a time you just discussed an Xbox magazine there. Reminded me of um, I'd pre-ordered my Xbox 360, uh, really hyped. And I remember going uh, with my family. We went to a local town and I was like, went in the local WH Smiths and or official Xbox magazine because I had a big 360 preview with PGR, um, Project Gotham Racing on the front. And it was just about feeling a bit special and that like you belong to like this little club. And I think mm. that's very common in, in humans to want to feel a little bit like they belong to something. And and the problem is now gaming is just uh, it's just on a mass scale. It's it's become what probably some of us never wanted and it's actually really really popular and i mean yeah we get the sort of like celebrity gamers like i don't know ninja pewdiepie all those people youtubers and it's lost a little bit of its um small scale secret club type thing and those magazines were a part of that that was like how we got our information mm -hmm. i mean the internet's obviously destroyed it pretty much anyway 
Yeah, that's that's the big one. That's done its number on on. Well, just games. think how many little tiny non-stories that you read about on a daily basis on a website. Oh, I'm going to check Push Square. I'm going to check. Yeah, Xbox. yeah. So I'm going to check your know, pure Xbox. I'm going to check. Nintendo Life, whatever it's called, or IGN or whatever. And these little snippets that are barely feature, there'd have been one of those sort of side stories that was just tiny down the side of a larger news article that you would pick up. You'd be like, oh my goodness, I didn't know about that. Or, oh wow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't feel, when you go checking every day, you get so watered down to news and announcements, that unless it's literally huge, like this next game's going to be uh, launched by simulating a chest burster through the bloody queen of england or something ridiculous like that never has the resonance it never you know in a magazine you might have been able to give it a bit more attention on a website unless it's like gonna hit your thermometer of like i'm gonna click on that by the time tomorrow comes around it's gone stay with us we'll be right back do you like video games podcasts and reminiscing I'm actor, video game writer, and total sweetie pie, Connor Savage McCabe, and on each episode of Call Me By Your Game, I sit down with a guest for an intimate look at a special game from their past. Did you and your dad beat Spyro the Dragon over the holidays? Or was Halo 4 the one thing that united your roommates during your senior year of college? Stories like these are what Call Me By Your Game is about. From video game content creator Janet Garcia to Hades voice actor Courtney Venez, I interview wonderful comedians and game industry friends about these memories. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe someday you'll call me by your game. Yeah, definitely. Um, what, what can we say, really? It's just, it's a real shame. I mean, great that there's going to be this play magazine carried on, but I, how's it going to compete? Maybe just having the one magazine out there it stands a chance but i think it is edge still being published i yeah i believe it is i don't know yeah, format, obviously, the only the fun, only but... place i i keep checking wh smith's to see if i've gone completely bonkers because you go your normal news agents and you're like yeah no there's no computer game magazines anymore wait what what what, what, what? so then you go wh smith's a repository of all magazines to find out and it's like uh no, there isn't any games magazines left, um, which I think is a massive shame. You know, when we interviewed Dave, you know, we didn't realize that magazines you have to buy shelf space if you're a magazine publisher yeah. from Tesco's to WH Smith or whatever, and that can cost almost as much as you make from the magazine. But if you're not on the shop shelf, you're not being sold. So, yeah, interesting and nice how we can finally start. Um, joining the dots in our video game knowledge behind the scenes by having on such great people as Mike and, and Dave recently. and uh, Hopefully, still dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but we've got another big guest coming up over the next calendar month, hopefully. So uh, keep your ears and eyes pinned. I don't know if you I, can I pin your eyes. I was told that was me. This is the big interview. This is the big interview show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's exciting to hear. Uh, looking forward to, to that. Um, yeah, I, I, very much a shame about the magazines. Uh, I've got numerous ones from back in the day, some of which have passed on to you. Mm, I'll go to um, the museum. I, like, I always like the, like the specials as well. Like I've got a few Edge, like 100 Best Video Games. And it's just... Um, we we found them great research aids as well for for the podcast. They're almost oh like god, absolutely. Library. If you uh, wanna if you wanna do a deep dive on a console or a game, and you've got magazines from that era, or you've got like a exactly. retrospective, it's fantastic. You can go back and actually like almost relive the hype of like the the writer who's written that article on on the up and coming console or the up and coming game, and very I think much that's great. You can't really. Yeah, you can go back to old reviews and stuff on websites, but again, it's just hard for people just to sit and read a magazine. The the, the phone is just a pure addiction. Uh, there's no other word for it. And I think we really need to be a bit more aware of how much they're, they're overtaking our lives a little bit. Mm. Um, mm. Anyway, that's a bit too serious for a hokey pokey podcast. But next bit of news finally finally admits it's okie cokey excellent hey. although you know thousands and thousands and thousands of listeners but 
you know, you've got to keep it real and admit that you're hokey cokey sometimes. But at the same token, we thank everyone for listening and hope that you find this uh, s- small s- scale show uh, humour fits your own palates. Next we bit of news, Tom. Oh, wait. Hey, what, what we got? We talk about the shame of the magazines, but we're here just hammering those final nails in. Um, doing the podcast. Anyway, can't help it, can we? No, we can't help ourselves. Uh, Snake! Back near I, the I actually table. thought you would hold the A a little longer, because it... Snake! Perfect. Perfection personified. It's what I expect from a Hollywood A-lister like yourself. I actually did the codec conversations myself. <laughs> you know, I'm somewhat of a codec conversation writer myself. <laughs> <laughs> all, like, all like 50 hours of them that are bundled into a Metal Gear Solid game. All the bits that people just fast forward through. Like, yeah, 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 Tom, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me more later. Tell me oh, more about this okay. news, you snake. <laughs> um, back near the start of April, E3 2021 was officially announced as an all-digital event set to take place in June. This year's E3 would host a number of prominent publishers, including the likes of Ubisoft, Capcom, Konami, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Except now, Konami has pulled out of proceedings, stating that it simply will not be ready to present at E3 this year. Oh, it's not We imagine that right. Konami's plans, like everything else, will have been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic over the last 13 months or so. But why was Konami given going to show up at E3 anyway? At least from a AAA perspective, the Japanese firm has been borderline silent for years now. Interestingly, in the company's official E3 statement, it alludes to a number of key projects that are currently in deep development. It says that we should stay tuned for updates in the coming months. Hmm. So stay tuned for updates in coming months, yet yeah, E3 is in a couple of months. Very strange. I think, I think there's lots of people struggling to commit to a digital E3, or even if it's a physical uh, presence E3. You have got a with the digital event, like you have actually got to put a bit of a presentation together. Um, from what I've read about uh, Konami previously at E3, they just tend to have like a Pro Evo stand and a few other little bits. They've never had a massive presence there. I just hope this isn't the start of people leaving the sinking ship and think, oh no, we're not going to get to do that. Because uh, going back to last year, and we'll get on the subject of E3, um, I think it was a bit rubbish last year not having it and, and just having that, like, bits throughout the summer. I mean, it's quite nice to have consistent news come in every couple of weeks, but it's almost when you have E3 and it just everything comes and you're like devouring it and you're just like give me the trailers give me the news what's new what are the big three got coming um i mean i wish sony carried on doing it because it's nice to have the big three there it's almost like a bit of a like uh e3 sadly is dead it's been accelerated by coronavirus but E3 used to be, I mean, it's nice in its latter years that it opened up and gave mere mortals a chance to go to E3. But E3, as we knew it, was no longer uh, the show that it was. You know, it's not the Electronics Entertainment Expo, which is where it gets its name. Yeah, I think it, it sorry, carry on. It, 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 it had fallen from grace, and I still think it's struggling to find its place, much like the magazine we mentioned in the first story. It's struggling to find relevance. It's struggling to find a way of reselling itself or rebranding itself. I think the whole, it doesn't just apply to video games. It applies to, as an example, like the motor trade. It can't get its head around doing a car show or a commercial vehicle show properly. People are still nervous about throwing money down on stands for something to erupt and then they have to cancel later in the year um, because yeah. sadly the the pandemic isn't going away quite as quickly as people thought it would be. It's going. I mean, the good news is it seems to be fading, especially in countries like the UK and whatnot, but we don't, we still don't know what the full ins and outs are. As for Konami, they have to be one of the strangest businesses known to man, because although they've had success that a lot of people would give their right arm for in video games, they aren't that interested as a business in video games, which 
blows the mind considering the franchises they've got. Now, to us, they make video games, but in Japan, they make all sorts of stuff. It's not just video games. In fact, I think their return from video games is the smallest return that they have in the business. So I think even Konami are struggling, not only with E3, but games in general. They've lost some of their innovators like Hideo and other people like that have sort of moved over to Kojima Productions. Um, But at the same token, how are Konami going to push forward? I mean, are they going to be like a place for new IPs? Are they going to try and recycle what they've already pumped out? Are they going to try and live on their best efforts from previous years? I just don't know, really, what their plan is. Yeah, it's a strange choice. Um, I don't. Yeah, they, they do hold some pretty big franchises. It's a shame. I, I think they're probably just going to do some like developer, maybe develop a deep dive on some of the projects they've got coming up. But like you say, it's a big commitment to to even have a digital presence, uh, let alone a physical one. Um, it's just it's a big outlay of money to potentially just like say have it cancelled last minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I like I say I hope this isn't the beginning of the end of <laughs> others dropping out, but I don't think it will be. I think they probably just weighed up some options and thought, no, that's not for us. Uh, but yeah, I, I hopefully we see some big reveals at E3 still, and it's an exciting show. Uh, great to have Microsoft and Nintendo there. Um, I'm sure they're going to have a lot of interesting stuff to show. Yeah. I think Nintendo especially need to up their game a little bit with, with the hardware. I think it needs a Switch Pro now. They're light years behind. I know people are like, oh, yeah, but they can port this, they can port that. It's like I can port uh, Returnal to a Vita. doesn't mean it'll run or run very well. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm not moaning on the Vita, but I'm just thinking of something in Sony's library that is quite a number of years behind the PS5. Um, but, you know, whatever they want to do, they always do something different. Uh, Zelda 35th anniversary, maybe we'll see more of that. As um, as the Mario one has, has ended now. Mm, that was a, that was spectacular waste of an opportunity, wasn't it? Mate, like if you're gonna have an anniversary like that, you try you, you want to try and think they're gonna line up a sort of bigger new title. I mean, they had the Mario 3D um, World expansion, which looked quite good actually. But then they did that terrible like digital release of um, Sunshine Galaxy and Mario sixty four, charging yet again for ancient games. What would have what would have eased the burden for me is if if they'd put all the mainline Mario games to date on one cart, so you've got the ability to play the original All Stars and the three D All Stars, and they just called it the Ultimate All Stars, and you therefore had. You know all those great games. Yeah, it does seem a bit of a waste of opportunity, but they they love to milk a cash cow. Well, if they put six games on or whatever, seven games on one cart, uh, and give it away for the same price, their Maybe profit margin is going down. Snes, redo the Snes box. I mean, people lap all that stuff up, and it, it's nice when they do pay homage to uh, their past, but it. It just felt really lazy, that release of those three games. Uh, and it was like a limited time thing, if I'm correct. For I the physical know. release, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. that was it. Yeah. Question. Sorry. Did we miss anything? Do you have an opinion or take on the news we missed? If so, Tom, how do the dear listeners get in contact with us and tell me, A, George Norn reads magazines anymore. B, Tom, can army make a great coleslaw on the fifth floor of the Tokyo Sky Dome? But that's about all they're doing these days. And 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 to be honest with you, both of you are so out of touch. You might as well stay in a fantasy village and incarcerated for all the real listeners actually care. Uh, stick another pin in your voodoo dollar, George and Tom. But in the meantime, send us a letter. How would they send us a letter uh, to let us know? If you've got a letter, you can send it by carrier pigeon to Rikers Island or uh, New York Central Park. Yeah. But for everybody else, you can reach us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. 
that's via email, or you can message us direct on Instagram or Twitter. Um, and also there's a Discord chat that you can get involved in. Only the most elite, most hardcore of gamers go in the Discord. So if you're a gamer and you consider yourself to be a little... Do you know I'm somewhat of a hardcore gamer myself? <laughs> if you're that person, you should be in the Discord. And if you're a casual person, come in the Discord anyway. Somewhere to eat your sandwiches on a Monday dinner time, have a little slice of Battenberg and laugh at the theatrics that go on there. Uh, Tom. When we thought about bringing you back for an episode, we kind of knew that there was only one episode that fits within the law that you could be brought back for. You're a massive fan of... You're an egoless, massive fan of what people have picked up in what was known as Listener Stingray. Now, this is a little bit like sticking you down and attaching electrodes to your testes. (laughs) But do you know what? I've been enough through enough pain. It's time we saw the metal of a man. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call listener stingray. Now, what happens is you all think he's a fiction of mine, Tom's or Bob's imagination or anyone that happens to stumble on the show. Uh, Part of the prerequisites in the green room is that you lick one of Tom's toads. That normally results in the show being how it is. But... If you've met Stingray, if you've had some good pickups, if you've been out and you've been to a flea market, car boot, thrift store, charity shop or whatever, and you've seen a game for 50p, even if it's not a great game or whatever, and you think, I want two grown-ups, three grown-ups, four grown-ups on a podcast to critique my pickup and let me know if I'm a winner at life or if I'm a loser, an official loser, then these men, I'll put hashtag Stingray's boot, and every once in a while when they're struggling for content, these two clown boot-looking dudes will go through these pickups and critique what we've done. So if you take a picture of your pickups, and we know that you do, because that's what Instagram's all about, taking pictures of your fine collection of things, and then asking people to rate your pickups with the star or the hearts. It's the hearts. This is how out of touch I am. So if you go on the search icon and you type... Hashtag, got to be hashtag, Stingray's boot. Stingray's boot. Click on that. It brings them up. If you want to follow along at home, you click on recent. That orders them in there. And there you go. First out of the boot, it's Devin Zilla, Tom. He's got a Five Nights at Freddy's Rabbit. Uh, Easter Bonnie. It's an Easter variant. What do you think of that? Disgusting. What is that? Uh, that's is there a that's Devin Zilla's pickup five. from Five Nights at Freddy's. Say sorry to Devin Zilla and Daddy Zilla now. Just do yourself a favour. Turn those um, induction stove hobs up and burn it with fire. Unbelievable. Well, what's he doing right here, Tom? This should be a blast from the past. He's uh, he's cooking up a storm of um, <laughs> what looks like... Melted More of your favourite Five Nights at Freddy's. Shame on you for not liking that. If yeah. you're not a fan of that franchise, you're set to do another six months. Your parole will get cancelled because I know your parole well, officer is a big fan. What? I can only scroll so far because I'm not on Instagram, so I've basically just put it in on Google and it's brought up like... It'll allow me to go so far and then it tries to hook you in to get you back on but that's not going to happen, I'm afraid. Okay, well, next up, the muscle of the show, Daddy Zilla. He's got a copy of Pirates of the Caribbean on Xbox, which I'm going to tell you a little story about. And he's also got you Survival of the Dead, George R. George A. Romero's uh, Blu-ray reissue. Pirates of the Caribbean on Xbox is actually a game called Sea Dogs 2, a game they were so sure was going to be a hit that they slapped the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise on an aged PC sequel and rushed it out on Xbox, called it Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, you'd think most people would let that sort of pass them by, like a little bit of flotsam and jetsam on the surface of the sea itself. Not me. No. I played the living daylights out of a very broken game by Procedure and Zinimax called Sea Dogs. When I heard Sea Dogs 2 was coming to my beloved original Xbox, being a fan of the Cedar and Morrowind, I decided this is a game I had to have. <laughs> Upon loading immediately into my system, I realized this was a game that I shouldn't have had. <laughs> 
And it was so bad. Not only was it an insult to the franchise that was seemingly very popular at the time, Pirates of the Caribbean, it was actually also a sequel to the broken, buggy and unfinishable mess that was Sea Dogs 1 on PC. I think it's time we moved on. Here's our Italian friend. Now, he seems to be a bit of a pickups master. Anything in that pile there that makes you happy, Tom? Uh, the, the one with Command and Conquer in it. Yes, it's... Uh, Beautiful. Uh, yeah. PlayStation copy of Command and Conquer. Yeah, and yeah. Arkham City. Batman yeah. Arkham City. Game yeah, of the true. Year edition. And what looks like various singles records as well he's got something got me something got me started <laughs> oh you were the only one yeah uh, something along those lines anyway it's probably not uh, probably a lot better than what i've just done but uh, salt and pepper in there as well it's in italian so it's uh, not every day that songs come to here so we like to immortalize them in uh uh Oh, one thing you're missing out on being incarcerated, by the way. Retro Gamer Thomas has breathed life back into the retro shed. Check it out. Oh, that is very nice. I can't look at multiple pictures, so this is really annoying. Well, look has at the card. Has he got a NES controller table? Has he got a... He has! Look at the eyes on you! And the background, it looks like a video game store, or a video rental shop. I mean, it's... He's got this industrial vibe to it. The whole thing looks great. Yeah. He's got his nice racking going on. I see that he's also managed to get hold of some of Royal Mail's finest Tupperwares. Underneath the bottom orange shelf is what's called a letter <laughs> tote. The little rat. Uh, yes. Um, I, bada I Binks. think this is an initiative. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. We won't report him to his superiors. Bada Binks, the retro gaming is back. He's got some ps4 games and he's also got himself uh, is that a guide for metal suit? Uh, I, I think he's i think it is a guide i think it is a guide fair play to the old boy he's got sexy brutale as well ps4 uh retro visions as always tom you know he sent us a picture of his nick home um i don't know why he continues but he does uh game boy matty he's got a pokemon controller and he's got the new pokemon snap no doubt a game that's, that's gonna have you dusting your switch off like no tomorrow or am i wrong um no i don't think i'll be picking it up um but it, it looks very nice very good for pokemon fans uh to see the the creatures in a, a sort of nearly 4k quality picture what's uh, wrong with you i'm surprised you don't want another on rails reboot of an n64 game some seemingly your taste has eluded you <laughs> Uh, roast space monk his dreamcast collection is starting to be a thing of envy it's very 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 handsome and he always displays it very well um some may know him as roast space monk others may know him as doogie doogie mcbain long time listener of the show ah look what our friend retro gamer thomas has provided us with here look at this R-Type. I've recently picked up R-Type's Tactics on the PSP. Ever heard of the R-Type's Tactics games before, Thomas? I've heard of R-Type, but not the Tactics. Um, oh, it's a really cool, like, Final Fantasy Tactics take on R-Type, where you kind of take on the craft and, and, and do things in the medium of a Tactics game. So it's a bit more sort really? of... Yeah, yeah. It's the, I'm excited for it arriving because I've kind of got my head around the... The concept, but I want to see how it's uh, put through so its, its paces. It's a new release as well. What R Type Final Two that RGT's displaying, or the Tactics games? The, the Tactics one. Oh Is no, they're it? not. They're not new. But I think they, there's a there's a series of them. I need to yeah. do some research because I was only really made aware of them through the PSP collecting yeah. click. But now I'm aware of said game through the click. I'm uh, I'm going to deep dive it a bit more. R hey, look at this. Here's a man that you that was such a loyal fan of the show, you couldn't even remember his name properly. Who is it? I can't see the names, mate, I'm afraid. I'm really what sorry. the hell? It's 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 uh I'm just scrolling. It's through. it's either Ozders or Oddcat or Ozcat. <laughs> it, he's done a Oddcat. wonderful picture of his uh, Pokémon Snap. 
unofficial controller podcast, self-serving, eager talent, eager talentarian egotists. Get them gone. I, think, being... um, I like a lot of efforts gone into um, the, the two Pokemon Snap pictures we've had, uh, the one from Game Boy Matty and the one from um, Odd Cat, Odders, <laughs> Oz Cat. I'll say all three, then one is right. Correct. Um, but yeah, very nice. Great. Nice effort. I'll tell you, there's a man it's who's literally fallen in love with the show. It's Badabings to Retro Gaming. He's had another pickup here. He's an absolute rabid pickupper. If that's a term, put pick up, put down. He's got Mario Brothers on the NES, Mission Impossible on the NES, Star Wars on the NES, and the NES, and two controllers. Nice. Very nice. I think I might have lost where we are anyway. You've got no idea where we're at. Radbash Gaming, coming in like a hero. One of your favourite games. I think this is in your top ten. You're going to deny everyone in it, but Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. Oh, that's uh, very good. Yeah, I did own that one. Definitely. On original Xbox. Um, yes, I did. Yeah, that's what I did on. He's got a uh, reproduced what looks like vintage Kenner, but it's actually for the Mandal- Mandal- Mand- Mandalorian-, Mandalorian toys, uh, amongst other things. Oscat's also got a Scott Pilgrim Volume 1. Daddy Zilla's back. Anything in there that makes you go, oh, yes, please, Mumsy? Uh Injustice 2, very, very good game. And um, for those unaware, I don't know where you've covered it in previous news, um, the creators of Injustice uh, 1 and 2 and Mortal Kombat series mm. are possibly currently working on a Marvel beat-em-up. It's not been mentioned on the show, but I also stumbled across that little nugget the other day and thought, mm, that's interesting. I don't know where that's going to go. They, those Injustice games are, are really well made. They've got actually good stories for a beat-em-up. Uh, they've got a great selection of characters. Gameplay is superb. Um, they're not a beat-em-up, though, are they? It's a fighting game. They're That's fighting great. games. I beat them yeah. up with Streets of Rage uh, and, and Golden Axe and so forth. Um, um, Daddy Zilla, look, he's got another set of pickups. Look how mint that NES control deck box is. Yeah. It's like brand new. Is that the Mini? No, that's actually a proper one. Wow. That is pristine. It Fair is. Play. Fair play to him. I hope he's well. Uh, Tingle Tuna, you used to know this character as Eslo and Midna, but due to um, Bobby's inability to say his name, he went and changed his name to Tingle Tuna. I then found myself unable to pronounce his name, so I called him Tingle Turner. I've benefited from one of his pickups recently. He sent me a PSP. But look what this character has has got. Nice little sort of collection. This should appeal to you. So this is formerly Eslo and Midna, now Tingle Tuna. Very good. I like the DS. That's the Mario one, isn't it? Or the, um, I believe it's like a Mario special edition. It's for the 25th anniversary. So you're bemoaning the 35th anniversary being rather lackluster. For the 25th anniversary, they basically slapped a couple of uh, icons on a DS and, and, and shoveled it out the door. The Barber Who Games, who in your absence, Tom, we found out isn't actually a barber. Or oh, is he not? His name's Barber. He's never cut a human hair. Well, when I say he's never cut a human hair, that's probably not true. Because I think we've all had a go at cutting our own hair with scissors at some point in time in our life. Either as a child, where we end up with a rather awkward-looking fringe, or or as an adult, where we may have trimmed ourselves all over. That's where I'm going to leave it for a PG show. So to say the Barbaro Games has never cut a human hair, Tom, is not completely true. But he's not known professionally as a barber. It is his family's name. So there may be some hair cutting talent lost within the barber family somewhere. Just Maybe laying. He's a descendant of Brutus the Barber Beefcake. <laughs> you know, if the straws clutch at them. You never know what might come true. Okay, from now on, he's no longer a barber, but he is a descendant of the great Brutus the Barber Beefcake, who I've now decided is a 17th century Sweeney Todd-like character, and that's what forbade the barbers from ever cutting hair again. Wait, 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 wait. I've got my pen. I'm getting this down in the law. I can write him into the farmer. <laughs> it would just have a grave in the village. 
And well, like, what with Farmerton being levelled <laughs> and there being some fan clamour for its return, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, that law tome's looking a little dusty. You say some, I hear all the fans. Well, prove it to me. You know, it's been that strong for Farmerton to return that I've literally had thousands of grown men sending me fountain pen written notes, but they've only written them in fountain pen so they can display how many times their saline filled tears have splashed across the basil and bond paper. Um, we lose ourselves. <laughs> Retro gamer Thomas is on the pickup trail again. It was for his birthday. So don't forget to say happy birthday to oh happy birthday rgt oh the pathless i really want to play that and you got it on ps5 very jealous so much so that you went out and bought it no um but he's got jedi fallen order which is getting a ps5 upgrade that is, free an, excellent charge. That is an excellent game considering oh. published by ea it's the really only well thing played. that i'm asking for in a ps5 reissue of jedi fallen order is is please don't let the Wookiees look like they're from PS2 Battlefront because they looked absolutely terrible. The rest of that game was spot on. They were like, these big, yeah. I don't even know. The hair, I don't know where they imported those character models from, but they should have deported them immediately. Uh, because uh, the rest of the game's very, like, it's not the greatest looking game ever, but it's certainly up there with some of the better higher end games on the PS4 and, uh, and, Xbox One, I think it, it looked great. Um, so I agree. It's a when you get to um, Kashyyyk, that they look a bit strange. It's a shame because the texture work and everything else is great. It's almost, I don't know, we know that game together came together in a very strange way and it kind of launched in not the best way. I've, yeah, I've got high hopes for the sequel. I think they can focus more and um, take what they've done with the first one and, and run with it because there's still a great story there to carry on and I think really good gameplay. Um, it's, oh, wow. Who's is that? Look what Radbash Gaming's got. Uh, what's he got there, Tom? The G.I. Joe uh, AWE Stalker, is that? Yeah. It looks great, doesn't it? Um, I've, I've got a real soft spot for G.I. Joes. Now, when I was a kid, they were called Action Force in the UK. Uh, when I when I was a kid, I had a mate who had loads of them, and I, we first opened his cupboard. I went to play at his house. He opened his cupboard because we were playing. We were going to play something completely different, and I just saw because he had a younger brother as well. So when they went Joe, they went all in on Joe. He had everything. He had like I remember seeing these hovercrafts. I remember seeing like helicopters. I remember seeing planes. I remember seeing little bases. They had loads of the figures. Like action four stroke GI Joe to me was like amazing, but there was just like it felt like there was nowhere to buy them in the UK. Yeah, I had um, I had a few because they had like the elasticated rubber band between the waist, didn't they? Mm. Hold the figure together. Um, my mate had a uh, at primary school. He had a a brilliant. It was like a mobile command center, and that was awesome. It's like three of us could play around it because it was so big and it had it rolled on these wheels, but it was... The mobile was, command centre, isn't that that one that opens up like a fishing box, like a sewing box, and it's basically a no, sewing no, box it, on it, wheels? It, it, it was pretty cool looking. It was like a vehicle, but I'll never forget it because we were watching, like the big thing to watch on a Friday was Thunderbirds. Um, so we watched Thunderbirds and then we played this um, action force command centre. But it was like a vehicle, but it wasn't like long... It was just really wide. It was a really weird design vehicle, but it was, uh, yeah. It was very was cool. it brown? Desert Gray, tan? Grey, I think. I think. <sighs> Pull that up on the Google. <laughs> Action Force Mobile Command Center. Yeah, it is what I thought. Yeah, it is it's what I thought. It's the basically the sewing box on wheels. I don't know. I've got the name right, mate. No, it's not that one. It's not the brown one. No. Uh, I will see where I can find it while you read some more of the pickups out. Okay. Slick as ever. Rose Space Monk's got his awesome looking uh, retro bit gaming Saturn cool pad. It's basically a transparent redo of the Saturn uh, pad, which looks fantastic. I like the way he's done it with his very in vogue uh, 
fake plants in the metal holder, surrounded by amiibos. Uh, Roast Space Monk is a man who knows how to dress a photo area. Roast Space Monk as well, elevating himself to the top of my emotional hierarchy. He's got himself a PS3. He's picked it up for uh, a very affordable price from memory. We talked about this on the Discord. If you're missing out on the conversation between the shows, that's because you're not on the Discord. Don't let me have to tell you off like a like a chastised child to boarding school. Just make it right and go listen to the Discord. Uh, Retro Vision, Survival of the Fittest on Atari. Um, moving on. Unofficial Controller Podcast, taking a week off and therefore uploading a photo of uh, if if life gives you the unofficial controller podcast, don't forget to uh, do whatever podcast, something, something. That made sense at one point in time. I honestly have no idea what Tom's shown me. It looks like a load of G.I. Joe toys poured into a vat and then they've had boiling water poured all onto them. Oh, so the G.I. Joe sort of- general, what a vehicle that is. Just look at that picture. Going for £550 on eBay. Like I said to you, it looks like a load of G.I. Joe Joy's toys got poured in a Tupperware and then had boiling water poured across them to fuse them into one amalgamated mess of a toy. Uh, Retrovision's back again. Ozcat! He's, he's just picked up more pops. Uh, Bada Bingster's also on the pop scene. Radbash Gaming's got Sonic Boom. Retrovision's Bless Their Heart, another Nick Comb, a.k.a. Romox Spark Bugs. I mean, I'm not one for graphics, but just no retrovisions. I couldn't, I couldn't find myself playing that in this day and age. I have an Atari. Oscat, this is going to tickle all your. Uh, look what Oscat's got himself. Oh, is that Miyazaki? Steelbook collection, I believe. Ghibli collection. Yeah, Studio Gilby Blu-ray Steelbooks. They actually look really sweet, really good. Um, yeah, very good. Bada Bingster, he's really took to this, hasn't he? He's playing Siphon Filter 2, uh, original. Oscat's got himself an Assassin's Creed Valhalla Nightlight, Tom. If you don't have one of those oh. in your cell, you're probably going to get the Night Terrors again. Uh, so are you free now? So you'll be able to sleep both eyes open, know. both eyes closed, depending on where you're at. <laughs> Here's the man that's the medieval descendant of Brutus to Barber Beefcake, in accordance with Tom's lore of the show. Ah, oh, what's he nice. got there? Uh, PS1 games, PS2 games. Yeah, some eye toy play. He was obviously a little short of uh, shelf filler because he's got Tonka on the PlayStation, Lego Island 2, amongst other highbrow games. But if you're going for the full set, you need them all. Sega Junkie, he's uploading cassettes these days, Tom. And I think one last shout out, but I'm going to go random, see where it stops. Harvey Retro 2, actually. Daddy Zilla, just because it's part of what makes the boots so good. What temperature he, is he cooking up a retro storm at, Tom? Uh, 849 degrees. It's 339 degrees, or it could be 39 minutes past the hour of three. Either which way, don't let Tom near your cooker or your retro games. Um, but he's got a copy of Rayman, Cinderella, wonderful. Harvey Retro, finishing with him. We're ending here with a copy of an advert he's found for a Game Gear. It says, after a tough game, relax with a little TV, and it's the advert for the Game Gear TV tuner. Listen, Uh, if you've enjoyed that, if you collect games, if you collect anything, really, even if it's variations on the UK domestic flea, add hashtag Stingray's boot to it, and you will hear two grown men critique or talk about your pickups like only two grown men can. One that's got a passing ambivalence towards anything that anyone else does other than himself, and the other person who likes to see people's pickups. It really boils down to a concentrated juice of, I like that, and I don't have time for this. Is Stingray here yet? Yes or no? Because I have to practice my script for my (laughs) resurgence onto the boards. There's there's no, there's no, theatre's open, so my time is is dedicated just to voiceover work, sound overwork. Sound. (laughs) He wrote the law, he forgets the law. It's his choice. (laughs) Okay. 
This should have been 100 episode special, really. But it's 102 because we don't like to do things normally. We've got the two original faces of the show back. One to now only part-time. He spends his time visiting tribes in the Southern uh, Americas because they've never heard of him. He can sell himself off to them as the next coming of Jesus. And they can't prove it or disprove it, so they lap it up. (laughs) Walking like a deity around some abandoned jungle somewhere in South America. Yes, that is you. I'm the reason most of the species are endangered now down there. I'll eat anything. It's not the eat that I think the uh, South South Americans have got an issue with. It's whatever else you try and do with them before you finish with the eating. Always got to finish with the eating. Okay. <laughs> ah, unless a spotted mongoose. What can I do to this? Will it be my friend? No. Okay. Can I forcibly make it my friend? No. Okay. Big Rick, fetch the camping stove. We shall eat it. <laughs> There's my three choices. Uh, whatever it is. It's going to get something hideous happen to it. Okay, enough of that. Stingray like to make house calls. When the big man makes house calls, you know you're in for a bit of a disaster zone. But he, he's, he's, he's managed to get some pretty good wares around the uh, the listeners, Tom. But now it's time for the real deal. Now, we haven't had one of your gems for a while. Before he tears up the street, what has he been up to this week? This week? Hmm. He's um he's been to uh he's been to Ancaster service station to get himself some fishing poles. <laughs> I was disappointed because Returnal Returnal I had to climb Returnal had to climb to the top floor window of the prison to fetch it. Oh of course. Ray oh, God. you need more rods to get the cast in line through the prison. Over the prison wall, over the barbed wire, past the uh, warden's office. I forgot Sorry, this was long form down. content. A throwaway comment in the beginning of the show is going to get doubled down on the back of the show because that's how law works. This is everything that I've been missing. I, I was so sorry, Tars. He's going to walk out of the service station with about 50 <laughs> together. Which basically looks like Mansell Beard. CD. Why aren't you taking the time to come up with a new character who owns the fishing lake in Farmerton who sells these things? Okay, what could his name be? Freddy the fish shop owner. <laughs> What's it, Freddy? <laughs> like all Farmerton characters, he just has to have the same first letter in his name as the uh, the train that he does. Okay. Brian Builder, Fred Fish Shop Man. Bill okay. Butcher. Is he, thing is, he's not a fishmonger. He sells fishing accessories for actually fishing the fish yeah. yourself. What's the fishmonger called? If he's called, if the fishing accessories guy, he's called Freddy. Philippe with an F. <laughs> Frederick's Bait and Tackle. And they, and they, and they, uh, they, <laughs> they queue up in their assembled thousands for this. Right. Let me ask you a question. So he's been getting from, of all places, well, Ancaster service station. He's gone and got some fishing tackle so he can throw you returnal. Well, can you hear that? That's him tearing up the drive. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot. What's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battlefriend all this week. These are the new release highlights for the week, April 26th to May 2nd, 2021. Listeners, these are out in digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast in your feed, but could be region dependent. Listen, let's think of it this way. The sound effect should have ended. Boop, pop, battle and bowl. Uh, he's out, he's here, he's in our face. He's, ex- it's, he's exhaling strong tobacco smoke in my face while I look down at his washed, stone-washed denim. What game are you going to... Loads in his boot today. What are you pulling you might, out? You might have to show me the screen, mate, on your phone because it's... Um, we're having a few technical issues over here. Okay. That's something that I may not even find possible to do, but we shall try because he wants, this is how he wants it. This is how he's going to get it. Okay. Let me 
<sighs> and and the myth that uh, this is actually <laughs> us looking in a man's boot is second to none. I don't know why they won't open. What's wrong with you? <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure. The uh, the news opened, but the new releases would not. Okay. Well, let me... You go th- read them out, and I will tell you if uh, it's going to be my Mummy Mummy pick of the week. Okay, we're going to do it slightly different this week. You need to, cold, give these a review out of five, okay? Just okay. cold. This is how Wait, we're going to... Just uh, because... Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna mix things up a little bit. So I don't need to look at that because I don't know if they've worked this out yet. I'm obviously in New York, and you've gone back to the ancestral seat of Farmerton upon your release. So we're doing this over Zoom. Um, first up, a token war on the PC, April twenty eighth. A token war combines deck building and turn based strategy into a unique and challenging game. Acquire new tokens to use in battle. Upgrade your stronghold and cast spells to decimate your foes. With both designed and random battles, your tactics must change each time if you intend to win. Okay, that was game one. How much are you going to give that out of five? Uh, one out of five. Failed okay. Pokemon trading card game with mediocre CFAX graphics. Brilliant. Alpha Particle on PC, April 28th. Alpha Particle is a sci-fi action game about a defenseless particle that must overcome its obstacles creativity, creatively. That's more like a platform game where you play a particle. That one. From Three what out of five. Three out of five. Okay. Enjoyable platforming experience. <laughs> This is how reviews get done now. Basically, a man who knows nothing about video games gets read out the blurb and he gives it a score. Uh, and that tagline as well that you've come up with them so far seems to be... What was that one for that one? A joyful platforming experience. Perfect. It's going on the box. Uh, Layers of Fear VR makes its way to PSVR April 29th. Enter a tangibly horrifying virtual reality and explore a mansion of horror as an artist falling into the depths of insanity will you find the muse for your masterpiece or madness four out of five immersive mental health vr game <laughs> mental okay. <laughs> okay uh this new way is actually way more fun uh legends of keepers you still need to pick a mummy mummy, though, by the way, and a VHS. Legends of Keepers, PC, Switch, and Stadia. That's right, Stadia. If you want your console to succeed, make sure you enter into a sponsorship deal with the Unofficial Controller Podcast, because within six months, we've pronounced Stadia a stone-dead corpse. Le- <laughs> Legends of Keepers, PC, Switch, and Stadia are our official, unofficial sponsor. It worked out well for them. April 29th, it's a solution to take on the world, hiding packets of data within YouTube and Google search algorithms. No one was poised to take over 4K streaming as quick and as hard as Google was. Again, as I say, until they entered into a relationship with us. Legends of Keepers is the perfect mix between a dungeon defender. Stingray, we've got another roguelite here. Uh, you bring one every week. You have been hired as a dungeon manager by the Dungeons Company. Your job is simple. Protect their dungeons. Now, I'm going to get off the fence a little bit. That reminds me of Dungeon Keeper, an old PC game uh, by Peter Molyneux. How much are you going to give that out of out of five? Two point five out of five. Dungeon defense swan song for the stadia. Just... <laughs> okay, all right, I like it. All the box quote guys in the industry, the big guys, the AAA hitters, you know, they're the ones who've been in the industry years, have been writing these box quotes for, for, for decades now. They're all of a sudden, their knees are banging together louder than, I don't know, 
someone's pill ca- pillbox. Uh, Total War Rome remastered PC April 29th. I was gonna I was gonna name a celebrity there, but then realised even in a show with such a small remuneration as ours, that probably could get zesty and catch me out when I least want it to. Total War Rome remastered PC April 29th. Total War Rome. Total warm. Total War. <laughs> what the hell? It's not worm or warm, okay? Total warm. The <laughs> where you have to get your bones warm as an aged grandma. This is Total War, Rome Remastered. Let's you relive the legacy that defined the award-winning strategy game series, remastered to 4K with multiple improvements to visuals as well as refinements to gameplay. It's time to revisit a true classic. Not everyone gets a second chance to conquer, conquer the Roman Empire. Five out of five. Total War ravages the plains of the PC Master Race. Wow. Now, I thought you were going to give it a high score, but I thought you were going to say Total War Rome Remastered, Father to a Murdered Son. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. Up next, new Pokemon Snap on the Switch April 30th. Explore lush scenery on unknown islands to snap photos of Pokemon in their natural habitats. Seek out and take in-game photos of Pokemon in their native environments in the new Pokemon Snap game only for the Nintendo Switch. Snap photos from the Neo one as you encounter and research lively wild Pokemon. You might see unexpected expressions or behaviours. Pokemon patrolling their territory, playing or lurking in out-of-the-way spots. Tom, we look to you for a score. Four and a third out of five. Mm. An exquisite journey through the plains of the Pokemon world. Wow. Okay. Finally, Returnal. PS5, April 30th. After crash landing on a shape-shifting alien planet, Celine finds herself fighting tooth and nail for survival. Again and again, she's defeated forced to restart her journey every time she dies. In this Stingray, got another rogue. Roguelike shooter, both the planet and your equipment change with every cycle, forcing you to adapt your play style, take on evolving challenges, engage enemies in bullet hell field clashes, scavenge alien tech for your upgrades to your abilities, forge your personal connection with the planet, and piece together Celine's story. Tom, out of five. Five out of five. Oh, mummy, God. Mummy, mummy, please don't return all this to the store because we can't afford it. Oh, my God. Someone fetch the king of the one-liner a trophy. It's only it's a very small trophy. Really only enough line for one line. There you go. What's the one line on the one-liner trophy? I like doing a few lines. <laughs> no. No, your probation officer who sat quiet throughout the whole episode, even with some of your slightly edgy comments, has basically done the He's neck chop. He's giving it the throat chop. He's giving it the throat chop. <laughs> He's, He's saying no. That. No, no, no. Take that out. Not uh, the use of drugs on the show. No, not at all. Not seeing as you've been all the way to the priory for your prit stick uh, situation. It's it's time to move on, okay? That night, we found you broken into a primary school and you'd managed to pull the crafter drawers down on yourself and cover yourself in oo and PVA. <laughs> it was a very, very dark day for the franchise. Okay, that's done. Before we let him go, as you know, you're a creature of habit and it was you who created this habit, a VHS, sir. Sir, I look to you. Pick a VHS from the from the amazing display. I'm going for Sharp's Enemy, starring Pete, the late Pete Possilway. It's the horrible Obadiah, who uh, is a very horrible character um, in the Sharp universe. It's not the first, and it won't be the last time you've picked Sharp. Um, There's a I, lot to get through. I've picked Hornblower recently, so I understand that's probably why you've gone with Sharp to try and sort of sort this out this imbalance in your mind even though sharp's the secondary show compared but you know that's eat 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 i'm eat, more, more eat. interested on what you've been watching what we we're discussing at the start of the show before the show oh god you're gonna make me say it on air okay 
I'm a fan as well. Recently, very recently, well, not so recently, I've become obsessed with the Netflix show The Crown, and I've managed to sacrifice all nine, 98% of my gaming time towards this new fascination with this show, which also revolves around me in my spare time in addition to watching The Crown, but watching documentaries about the Windsor family. <laughs> Was this spurred on through the, the demise of the late Prince Philip? The late great oh, Prince think. Philip. Yeah, I suppose it was. That's where it started uh, a couple of weeks ago. I liked uh, I've it. I've always. Too bad to say to you, mainstream. Well, you know how it is. You, you write the theme tune, you sing yeah, the theme tune. I, I get it. Like, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's current. So it's, it's nice to find out. And it's interesting that you've watched the show and then doing actual research on... on well, I actually, life, I actually right? did the research first and then watched the oh, show. Okay. Yeah. And for the facts, as always. Yeah, which, for the most part, I think the ground gets sort of... 60% correct. I think there's lots that we don't know. I think there's lots of things that have been filled in. I think there's lots of sort of... Uh, it's a dramatisation isn't it? Yeah, I think people forget it's not a documentary. It is made for TV drama. It's, it's going to play with a little bit. So. But yeah, I think it's a brilliant show. It's well made, well acted. Um, yeah, very interesting. Even I'm not a fan of like, I'm not that interested in sin. There's a lot of British history and I think it might engage some younger people if they watch it into researching about certain events in British history, um, which is not a bad thing. No, not at all. I think some of the things in there are probably quite minor now, but there's still some like... Um, we've got some sound issues with Tom. I don't know what's going on. It looks like he's doing a documentary about the British royal family, but we're not picking up any of it. He's put his heart and soul into it, and we heard not one single line from him. Whether they can fix that in the edit, I don't know. Are you back with us now, all the way from Lincolnshire? Here I am in New York, looking towards you. Are you back on comms? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Now, perfectly. Unfortunately, we missed your one-man monologue about uh, TV historical dramas. But I'm sure in the extended director's cut, they will get that and that will keep them tuning in. Um, <clears throat> with the dust settled and the smoke cleared and what was formerly a space between us occupied only by the internet, there existed a man in pixel form that showed us the inside of his boot because there's no other way he could appear in New York and in the deepest Lincolnshire at the same time. At home in the ancestral seat, he sits there supping on a variety of liquids that he's managed to get his courtiers to bring him. Those that paid attention at the top of the show, they knew that Odders, Oscat, or a combination of the two, was gripping hard, tight down, on a gamekeeper's hook, or crook, or stick, depending really on how you're feeling. They've now gripped tight to that for the whole episode, and they're wondering whether I'm going to ask you what you're hoping to play. Well, I can give you an answer. Can you hear me okay? Unfortunately, loud and clear. <laughs> um, I'm going to be carrying on with Eternal. Unfortunately, I uh, have to put that on hold to be summoned here to to answer for my crimes in video games. Very uh, much. Yeah, I'm going to be enjoying <laughs> that. Um, I'm not going to rush through it. Let's take the time, do a few cycles every so often. Uh, I've got Res Evil coming the end of uh, end of this week which I'm looking forward to as well um, going to get stuck into that I didn't try the demo or anything and I've tried to avoid any more trailers or spoilers mm. uh, get stuck into that I recently played 7 as well as part of the one of the free PS5 um, or PS Plus games that you got when you got PS5 and were you impressed that. with that when you came to it after all this time yeah I was um, <coughs> it's very very well made it's a little short um, it's terrifying. There was times where I was playing it where I was like, I don't really want to carry on because it's just too in intense. Um, my biggest gripe with some of those games is often, and with horror films, is when you suddenly have like a very human enemy becomes like a creature or 
um, something a bit more paranormal. I've always find found humans to be a lot more scary than, uh, than made up monsters or creatures, and, and Resident Evil is, is guilty of that sometimes. I think um, some human sinister enemies would be uh, would be well used. I mean, the Baker family in Seven are are very well done, um, but when they started minor spoilers when they started mutating and stuff it, it gets a bit like I'm not that scared of that I find it mm, it's I, I'm the same as you <laughs> um, but yeah uh, those are the two titles I'll be focusing on uh, playing some online games with with friends but um, oh we recently bought Civ uh, Civ 6 on um, PS4 uh, it was in the sale for £11 so if you want to come and join us playing that, when I get some proper wired internet here, um, it would be it'd be good. We could do a four player battle. It'd be quite quite interesting. He's intrigued. I can't. I just no. yeah. He's just he's fighting it. Try <laughs> lure him to the dark side. If there'd been any other game there, if there'd been any other game there for multiplayer, you that you could have spread this evil mistrust about. I could have got behind it, but Civ for me, I don't want to be sat there while you're like, all oh, right, don't work today, mate. Oh, by the way, here you go. Here's my Roman soldiers. I mean, like, dude, I'm I'm already at, I'm already at the rifle age. Like, why are you talking about this? I don't want to talk to you right now. Like, oh, listen, <laughs> no, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> Give me a drink for what? Oh, look out, team two. What? Who's team two? Why you want Spitfires and Hurricanes? I'm not even. I've only got chariots. No. <laughs> like, can you? That's the sort of noise that's going to be coming over the headset in a multiplayer game of Civ. How is that even remotely cool? That's what video gaming is, mate. It was never meant to be cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> any other last words for the fans? Because uh, I'm going to let them go. I yeah, think they've, I think they've seen. Late. I think they've Go seen on. and done enough, don't you? I should ask you what you're hoping to play. Oh, are God. Be, are you going to be talking into return, aren't you? Yeah, that's that's basically I've saved myself. Like I say, things have been a bit different over the last couple of weeks, so I've not been around the uh, gaming, the, the the big gaming setup, you know, with the PS5 and all the, the big boy consoles into it. It's been a bit more sort of rushing from place to place, mobile, not mobile, but handheld gaming sort of a time, which is why I've been... Uh, playing these very strange games recently but uh <clears throat> no i think that's all thank you for uh using some of your newfound freedom to rejoin us on the, the show that was really the the end point your career as a celebrity so apologies for that you serve time now and my pleasure as always you know hollywood loves a good sort of backstory don't they? yeah they they kind of do they made you they break you they're going to break you again then they get to break you all over again it's their perk like, like Downey Jr. all over I'll become popular again I suppose he would never was unpopular just because I, I would just drop that again off that statement and I think that's just perfect it's the perfect comeback noise okay I just want to be popular <laughs> because <laughs> again kind of implies that at some point in time you were right up there now you were close don't get me wrong i mean you were the third understudy to ian mckellen's for macbeth uh down at the raw shakespeare company which is fantastic you know but three people had to be on their deathbed before you even got to pull on his robes how do you think they got on those deathbeds well now we know you might be going back in to serve time for oh, a no, I'm so much. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure we'll sort that in your edit. Your probation officer's sweating. Uh, yeah, I was going to say something, but I won't. I think, I think, I think, really, that's all we have time for this week, listeners. As always, thank you for your time. I look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. You take care, Tom, and I'll speak to you soon. See you soon. Bye, everyone.
Hi, it's George here from the Unofficial Controller Podcast. Just taking a moment to, first of all, thank you for listening. It means a hell of a lot to us. Secondly, every week we bring you free content, the latest news, the new releases, a feature of note, normally something to do with games or gaming past, be it one of our history of documentaries or an insight into the industry itself or how games have affected us as people. Well, yes, we incorporate you listeners into that. All we ask is that you drop a little comment on our post on social media and you can get featured on the show. Hey, do you know what? You may even win a prize. The only charge for this is zero pounds, zero pence, zero dollars. That's right. No money. But all we ask is that you like, subscribe and leave a review wherever you found this show. And if you're feeling a little bit cheeky, tell a friend, get them to do the same. We have a Discord that's free for you guys to all join in and get involved in. And the community on Instagram and Twitter is alive and thriving. So don't be a lonely gamer. Make yourself known. Thank you. And now it's time to begin this week's entertainment. Take care, guys.